Good morning. You join me on a uh, rainy uh, Friday morning, um, sort of on and off this morning, um, but uh, it's good to be with you. Um, I don't have any numbers yet, so let's see um, who's going to join us. We've got one. I don't have a name. Ah, good morning, Leslie. Got three. Good morning, Meg. Yes, we are reunited on Monday. I am free from uh, isolation. Um, morning, Malcolm and Irene. Morning, Isaac. Morning, Julie. It's Friday, so I think that means Terry's in the office. So it's just you, Julie. Good morning. Good morning, Jill. Good morning, Alex. I hope, um, Alex, I hope Tom, uh, Tom Scan went well yesterday. Um, praying that he is uh, better uh, and that that came up clear. Uh, good morning, Dave and Susie. Good morning, Tup. Good morning, Nanette. Maybe Mike is with you. Good morning, Mike, if he is. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Nessa. Vic and Hev, good morning. <laughs> yes, Malcolm, I, I, I will be free in a couple of days' time. Um, good morning, Richard and Muffin. Good morning, Becca. Morning, Chaz and Marion. Good morning, Mike. Good to have you with us. Good morning, Marilyn. Oh, very good. That's good to hear. Um, that's really good to hear, uh, Alex. Um, <coughs> Hopefully the dizzy, hopefully the dizziness will uh, surpass. Um, at, you know, will we'll pass at some point. Um, glad to know that it's nothing, uh, nothing major or nothing wrong, um, and just some uh, build up of that. Brilliant. Um, what time have we got? We've got a few minutes still. Morning, Irene. Good to have you with us. <coughs> there should be one more person that says they are watching. Aha, there we go. Marion, uh, Marion sorry. Good morning. Good to have you and Chaz. Good morning, Callie. Lovely to have you with us. Lovely to see you uh, the other on, on Sunday evening. Good morning, Leslie. Okay, so apparently it is now 10 o'clock. Um, <clears throat> my laptop uh, clock is a couple of minutes out and I always forget to change it, um, but apparently it is 10 o'clock on Friday the 27th of November 2020, uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So that means I'm gonna get rid of these comments and I'm gonna bring up my notes. So, I thought today, um, sorry, <coughs> 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 
I haven't been coughing all morning, and it's not until you go on screen uh, that you start coughing. So today uh, I'm going to have a look at the book of James, hopefully bring some encouragement from that. Um, James, also known as Jacob, his half-brother of Jesus, and this book is uh, written to Israel, and it's a summary of James's wisdom for believers now, chapter one is James's introduction to the rest of his letter. He starts off in verses two to four saying, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. This is telling us to have joy even in the trials because this testing of our faith causes us to need to lean on God and persevere. When we are facing really tough things in life, it's, it's, that, it's, it's then we need to trust God the most. <clears throat> it seems that these past few weeks, although we have been celebrating great news and uh, healing from disease, for example, um, you know, Luke's, uh, Luke Cranberg's, you know, remission. Um, but we have also experienced the uncertainty and heartache of seeing others in our church family suffer. Later on in chapter one, it says in verse 18 that he, God, chose to give us birth through what the word of truth. He chose you intentionally. And it's through reading the truth of his word that he gives you life. We need to feed off of his word as a guide for our lives. And it's not just about his word pouring into us. In verse 22, it says not just to listen to God's word and not do anything about it, but to do what it says. It's about his word pouring out of us, about living it. Verse 25 tells us, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues into it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. As we look to God's word and we live it, we will be blessed and find freedom. Through his word, we come to know our saviour more and more. We come to know our father's heart. If you, if you fix your mind on the truths of his word, he will guide you through the trials that you are facing. The key is, though, fixing your eyes on God, pressing into him, reading his word, talking to him regularly. If you want to see more of a move of God in your life, you need to be willing to lay down your life entirely for God and to trust in him. The rest of the book of James from Chapters two to five is made up of several short teachings on how to live our lives for God. Chapter two tells us in verse 26 that without faith, deeds is dead. Genuine faith produces uh, fruit and good works. This means that our faith in God should show through our actions and the way we live our lives. James goes on to say in chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Simon spoke on that a few days ago, or a, a little snippet of it a few days ago. James goes on to say, in, uh, sorry, come near to God and he will come near to you. If we turn from our worldly desires and live our lives every day the way that God is calling us, the enemy will flee from us. Now, it's important to, uh, to note here that he doesn't just tell us to resist the enemy, that we, mu we must first submit to God. We can't try and fight temptation and battles in our own strength. We need to turn to God. We need to surrender our lives over to him to completely submit ourselves to him and let his will become our will. As we do this, he will draw near to us. Notice it's not just resist the devil and he will flee from you. We can't do that in our own strength. We know all too well that we're unable to uh, to do things righteously in our in our own strength. This doesn't mean that the battles you are facing will disappear. That doesn't mean that anything that we face will disappear. They will still be there, but the difference is is that we will have God's strength to face them and to persevere through them. <clears throat> I know there are some of us in our church who have been facing really tough battles lately. And I just want to encourage you with a verse from Psalm 34. 
The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. He is with you. He is for you. And as you choose to draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Keep going. Keep pressing in to God. Keep walking in his will for your life and he will strengthen you. As James's letter draws to a close, he tells us in uh, chapter 5, verses 8, to be patient and to stand firm in our suffering. He refers back to the suffering that Job faced and what good things God brought, um, brought out through that suffering. In Genesis 50, verse 20, it says, You mean evil against me, but God meant it for good. <clears throat> Going through trials develops our character and matures us in faith. God can, can and does turn around difficulties that we find ourselves in for good, for his good plans and purposes. Remember, God is still in control and he still has a good plan. This is a time of trusting in him and waiting for difficulties to pass. But it's often in the waiting that God strengthens us. God is wanting to use this time not only to draw near to you, but also to mature you for his purposes. God knows what he's doing and his plans are always better than our own. And it seems that a lot of these 10 at 10s and, you know, our Sunday services always come back to one thing. They always come back to, well, firstly, of course, Jesus, but they're also coming back to the situation that we've been in in this pretty much this this whole year. And as we in, in this next few days, as we enter in or next week or so, enter into uh, another um system of uh, lockdown of of a tiered um lockdown um this is another sort of you know when 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 can we you know be together fully when can we uh, stop wearing masks when can we um, hug each other when can we be together properly and it's in this period that we re really need to press uh, into God and really need to um, just lean on him and uh, we, we don't understand it we, we, we don't really know what's going on but God does trust in him chapter 5 verses 11 says the Lord is full of compassion and mercy God knows what you are facing. He knows how you feel and he is full, uh, full of compassion for you. He loves you. He is there with you right in the midst of it all. James finishes this letter by telling us in verse 13 that if anyone of you is in trouble to pray and to also pray for one another. And that's so good to see on our NLC members page, this page, that um, prayer requests are coming in for uh, Tom and for Jeff and Carol and for Luke and for others. And it's so good that um, we are praying for each other as a body. God is calling you to come to him and to be held in the arms of your loving father. Cry out to him because he knows. He also calls us to pray for one another, which, as I said, we're doing so well. We are to stand together and be the church, the body. We are family and God calls us to encourage one another and to be here for each other through the good times and through the tough times. So let's do that. I'm going to end with a, a, a prayer um, and then I will uh, let you get on with your day. <clears throat> oh, Lord, thank you. Um, for the opportunity to be together in this way, even though I can't see those who are watching, and uh, but they can all see me. I thank you that we are all uh, connected by your son. Uh, and I pray, especially for those who are having a rough time of it at the moment, we lift Jeff and Carol to you. Um, we lift Tom and Alex to you and the Horsley family. Uh, and we lift... Um, you know, we lift Luke to you as well. We know that he's had a tough time of it, Lord, but I thank you and I praise you, Lord, and hallelujah that he, um, he is cancer-free currently. And I just pray, Lord, that we will uh, learn to, to lean on you more and more and to trust you and to pray for one another and encourage one another. Um, I think as a, as a church and as a family, we are so good at encouraging each other. And I pray that that continues even through uh, you know, the cloud of, uh, of, of Facebook, Lord, that uh, we will still be able to encourage each other. And I pray, Lord, that we will just lean into you and that we will recognise that um, 
Our faith in you is such a gift and we thank you for that. As we go on with our days, I pray that you bless us and we will feel uh, another degree of closeness to you. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Um, no 10 at 10 tomorrow, um, but we will see you on Sunday morning. Really looking forward to uh, seeing you on Sunday. Um, we love you. God bless you. See you soon.